Welcome once again to Szeged in Hungary. The finalists coming straight forward for the men's kayak 200 meter race now, including, of course, Britain's Ed McKeever, the defending world champion up against its arch rival, Ronald Rao. Maxime Beaumont for France is in lane one, Marc de Jong for Canada in two, Alexander Diachenko for Russia in three, Ronald Rao in picture there, the world champion in 2009, the runner up in the world last year to this man, Ed McKeever, 28 years of age from the Bradford on Avon Club, the world champion and European bronze medalist. Piotr Simonowski, the man who won the Europeans, beat uh, McKeever this year in uh, Belgrade. Jimmy Burson, who's improving, representing Denmark. He was eighth in Europe. This is the silver medalist from the Europeans in June and completing the lineup. Cesar de Cesare from Ecuador. <coughs> 200 meters, the Olympic discipline, and away we go. Terrific start by Ed McKeever, got the first stroke in very well. Uh, this is really a fast burn. McKeever, who is five from the top of the picture, and here is the world champion. That's it, he looks absolutely fantastic. They're extremely strong, but he's been put under pressure by the pole at the moment. Come on, Ed, he's got to keep driving. Yeah, McKeever and Simonowski. McKeever, who just 24 hours ago went 34.26 to set a new world best time. Simonowski, though, really driving for the line. Uh, Poland just ahead of Great Britain as they come to the line. Poland, Germany in third place there. Ed McKeever, the silver medalist, I think, this time. But Simonowski, third in the world last year, behind Ronald Rao, behind Ed McKeever, has taken the world title. McKeever just all Always just a little bit off the pole. <laughs> just a fraction behind your right, the whole way down, trying desperately to get on turns, but the pole just had to jump on him at, at the start. You can see very, very clean start, very level. Now they start to work. Ronnie Rao, actually, the German, just getting his bow. There he is in front, extremely dynamic paddler. But it's all about the pole there, just keeping his nose in front after the first 20 strokes. Absolutely amazing race there. Gold to Poland, silver to Great Britain, and Ronnie Rao just shooting the bat. Very close with Maxime Beaumont on the far side there for the bronze medal. This is a difficult angle. There's the pot. Ooh. I think Ronnie Rao's just got the bronze medal there, but it's very close. And you can see all of them leaning back in the kayaks to shoot the bow across. But Piotr Simonowski, that's a terrific victory, and he's Mr. Consistent as well. He, McKeever, and Ronald Rao, these are the three dominant men in this particular Olympic discipline. They are, aren't they? And it's so difficult to be dominant in what is such a short event. It's absolutely eyeballs out on the deck for as long as you can for the whole race here. You can see the results up now. And they're 34.770. Not as fast as McKeever yesterday, but Simonowski takes the title. Well, Piotr Simonowski, what a uh, performance from him, because uh, that really does highlight the uh, improving form of the Polish squad. <coughs> Straight on to the lineup now for the women's 200 metres with the Olympic 500 metre champion on the far side there, Ina Osipenko at Radomska, who was a silver medalist. Uh, in this particular race last year in Poznan. In lane one, in lane two, Japan. 29 years of age and on the far side, but next to her in lane two, uh, senior by uh, five years, but in very good form, is the Japanese paddler. Here she is. This is Shinobu Kitamoto, the world bronze medalist. Last Olympics, she was in the K2 500, but she's really made this individual boat now very much her property. Lane three, this is Marta Valkevich. Had a bit of an off-season last year, but go back to Europe, uh, 2010, and she was the silver medalist and also the silver medalist at world level, but looks to be back to something like that 2010 form at the moment.
Russia, Natalia Lobova, the European champion, 24 years of age, emerged after getting a bronze medal a couple of seasons ago in the K4500 for the Russians. And Lisa Carrington, the winner of the World Cup 200 in Duisburg, which was the first time we really took note of her, from the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand and uh, from the Eastern Bay Club. Next to her, the Portuguese, Teresa Portela, 24 years of age, the European bronze medalist and a pretty consistent performer. Timea Paxi for Hungary gets a big roar. Nine World Championship gold medals, 18 World Championship gold medals in all. Alana Nichols for Australia from Western Australia, from City Beach, the national 500 and 200 metre champion. And closest to you in lane nine, Jess Walker, originally from Brighton, paddles out of the Royal Canoe Club, coached by Miklos Simon and Trevor Hunter, and hoping to improve on last year's 10th place. She's in the final, so that is already an improvement. Eighth in Europe for Jess Walker on the near side. Very quick start by Teresa Portela there of Portugal. Yeah, tr traditionally an extremely quick start at Portela, but this could be anyone right across the field here. Jess Walker closest to us, away to a good start, and Lisa Carrington look extremely strong through the heat. She's looking good at the moment, as is the pole. Yeah, and it's uh, Mana Valkiewicz there who's up. You can see the black kite there of Lisa Carrington, but if you go a little bit further away, you can uh, pick up the... Athlete on the far side there, Marta Valkiewicz of Poland, vying with Lisa Carrington. Lisa Carrington being chased by Teresa Portella. Lisa Carrington of New Zealand has taken the gold medal, and that's very close spread right across. Marta Valkiewicz also in the fight for silver. Maybe Alana Nichols and Timea Paxi coming into that as well. But that's a fantastic, that is a big moment for New Zealand canoeing. Well, that's great, isn't it? I mean, she's been in great form, as I said, over the heats and semis. Not the best start. Portea absolutely stormed out of the start on the first stroke there. Jess Walker closest to us. Decent start from her. She was looked to be midfield crossing the line. And you can see the Hungarian in picture a little bit slow off the start. Yeah, Tamea Paxi, uh, terrifically experienced, but really taken off by the others really didn't get into this but Lisa Carrington as she did in the semi-finals finding a little bit extra she gets the gold Australia at the bottom oh looks to be Poland getting second place I think Marta Valkiewicz has got the silver the bronze oh could it be Osipenko could it be Alana Nichols on the near side that's incredibly close that is a photograph impossible to tell but you know New Zealand uh, canoeing have been looking for a long, long time to find a woman of this quality in this sport, and they found one. From uh, Ahopi in uh, New Zealand, that's her hometown, and just 21 years of age, so a real talent. And I just wonder whether Alana Nichols from Australia might just have squeezed into a bronze medal position. I'm not sure about that. Well, it was very close, wasn't it, between her and the Ukrainian over in lane one, but uh, a dominant performance from Lisa Carrington. She's a name to watch for the future, isn't she? And this, remember, is an Olympic event, so we'll see it in London next year. Absolutely. What really impresses me is that she's got a little bit extra at the end, which is what we saw yesterday in the semi-finals. Yeah, uh, that's right. I mean, you've got to get away to a good start, but it's still, you're talking 35 seconds worth here, and she looked very strong right the way through the race couple of good mates there, the Aussie and the New Zealander, congratulating uh, maybe each other, because I'm not quite sure whether Alana is on the podium as yet, but Lisa Carrington most certainly is, and just uh, running away while her uh, boat, I think, is uh, checked. Now, still waiting for this uh, result, which is tantalising. Marta Valkiewicz is certainly in Poland back to something like her very best. Um, she's had a run of lots of silver medals. She got a bronze medal back in the World Championships in 2007 in the K2-200 and a silver last year in Poland in the K2-200 and a silver in the World Championships in 2009. Let's have a look at it again. Australia at the bottom. Well, I think the action is at the top of the course there. Osipenko... It looks as if Carrington definitely, then 
the Polish paddler. You can just see her beyond as Carrington looks across. She really wins that by some margin for a 200. And then, ooh. ooh. <laughs> The angle is, uh, you just can't call that between Osipenko and Alana, really. And it's Osipenko who's got it in. In fact, the Japanese, I said it was over the far side, and uh, Kitamoto was third last year. But look at those times. Kitamoto and Nichols with exactly the same time. Russia, and I think Russia, Azerbaijan, Lithuania, and the Ukraine are the four lanes and four countries to look out for. Over on the far side there, De Jesus of Brazil, who was fifth in the World Championships last year in Poland. And then in lane two, the very much improving Spaniard, Alfonso Benavides, second in Europe to uh, Demnianenko this year. And in lane three, to his right, the blue and yellow of the Ukraine. Yuri Shaban, Olympic bronze medalist over 500 metres in Beijing, bronze medalist in the Europeans, just out of the medals last year in the World Championships. Then uh, Yevgeny Shuklin for Lithuania. Only six in the world, but go back to last year, and uh, he was actually European champion and has been a world bronze medalist uh, on a couple of occasions over this distance. Then uh, representing uh, Azerbaijan, Valentin uh, Demnyanenko, very much a late developer, world champion back in 2005 and the European champion this season. Perhaps the favourite, well, the, the world champion trying to defend his title at 25 years of age, nine world championship medals, five of them are gold, and he won here in Sheged back in 2006 when he won a C2 200 gold. Dmitry Vyshyskin, five gold medals at world championship level, and he was a winner here in Sheged in 2006 when the championships were last hosted here. And then in lane number eight for Poland, Pavel Barakiewicz, 34 years of age, 14 medals to his credit, an Olympic silver medalist back in Sydney, over 500 metres. And then the improving 23-year-old Frenchman nearest to you, the world silver medalist, Thomas Seamart, who was also a bronze medalist uh, back in 2009. So, a fantastic field of talent here, and this again will take less than a minute to win it. Absolutely, such a close race. The winner could come from anybody across this field here. Whoever gets away to a good start gives himself a great chance. Well, just pushing against the boot, and somebody's going to get a warning here, I think. Yeah, it looked like lane three, the Ukrainian, trying to push a little bit early. There he is. And he's acknowledged. So he's under a little bit of extra pressure now, particularly over this distance, and this time they're away. The Belarusian looked like he got away to a good, strong start, jumped out of that boot, but there's a long way to go yet. They've got to whip their stroke rate up, drive those legs, and with those huge arms, the Azerbaijan, he's got a lot of work to do, but he's so strong, he's just getting himself in front now. Yeah, so Demyanenko, the European champion in picture now, leading the race fractionally. Just uh, below him, Ivan Shatil of Russia going well. Then it's uh, the Belarus paddler, but it is at the moment Azerbaijan from Russia as they come towards the line. Shatil trying to explode to get to him. Also Belarus, Demyanenko staying tough for Azerbaijan, coming towards the line. Azerbaijan get the gold, and that's a massive photo. And put into the photo Benavides of Spain, two from the top of the picture there because he's right there with Shatil and also Vysishkin of Belarus but Demyanenko the European champion now also takes the world title and he emulates what uh, Piotr Simonovsky just did in the kayaks and Demyanenko has unified world and European titles. Well, in, in fact, you watch the start there. Demyanenko is the last out of the block, so it just shows it's not all about the start. Yes, you need a good start, but he obviously used all his strength, all his leverage to get one over on the other paddlers. Well, fantastic performance. And Shatil just couldn't get to him, the Russian. Neither could uh, Vyshyskin. And here you can see Azerbaijan, then just below him is the Russian. Ooh. 
That is so close. Yeah, I think you're right with the Spaniard. I think he came for a real late charge. Let's just look as he shunt the boats over the line. Now, that's... Ooh, that looks like the Russian... Well, I think it's the, the Russian looks favoured to take the silver and the Spaniard to get the bronze. Yeah, I think so, but no doubt about the gold. Just has a quick look round. Time to look round before he shoots his bow over the boat. Make sure he stays in it. And then another victory for him. He's a fantastically talented paddler. Yeah, as I said, he didn't really get into the sport uh, pretty early. And uh, his form, really, we started to notice him about six years ago. But there it is, and the Spaniard has indeed got the bronze from Yuri Chaban. And you can see Chatil, the world champion, exactly the same uh, as just happened to Ed Makiba. He just couldn't defend it, and 39.33, it's a pretty good time. It's not as fast as they were yesterday, and that's a picture of a very happy Spaniard, Alfonso Benavides. As we... Uh, Hardy had time to catch our breath before we move on to the women's Canadian singles, which is, of course, not in the Olympic Games as yet, Malcolm. But, you know, who knows? Rio 2016. Now, this is uh, Irina Muraviova of Ukraine, who was eighth in the world last year in Poznan. But this has already come on a lot, this discipline. Lydia Weber, this year's European silver medalist, two away from you from Germany. Then Sophie Cordelier from France, improving. She was seventh in the world a year ago. Maria Kazakova, the European champion and world bronze medalist representing Russia. And then the very, very talented 19-year-old Lance Vincent Lapointe for Canada, who uh, yesterday won the uh, C2 500 meters, and she's the defending champion in this. Uh, Staminova of Bulgaria, who was disqualified in the Europeans. You can see, hopefully, she's going to have a better day today. Then uh, Heresimenka in the green and red for Belarus, the European bronze medalist this season. Then in lane eight, two from the bottom of your picture in Brazilian blue. This is Damatos, Maisa Aparecida de Matos and closest to you representing the host nation Kinshko Takac who was just out of the medals in Europe but this well I have to say the way that Laurence Vincent Lepin for Canada from Trois Rivières has been paddling here the Quebecois who won a goal for Canada to add to Adam Van Kerverden's can, uh, kayak single 1,000 meter gold. This could be a third gold coming round for Canada. Well, yeah, she's in great form. You can see tall, rangy athlete in the middle there, but I'm sure the other paddlers will be looking to put her under pressure right from the first stroke. Look how steady she's holding. The others are panicking, but she's. Great start by the Canadian, actually. Yeah, you're absolutely she's right. Like, so confident in the start there. Just hovering over the water, waiting for that yellow boot to come down. And now she's into a rhythm, and she's already stretching away. And that was all about balance and breathing. And she held that, and she's got the lead now. And she's going away from Maria Kazakova, who's just on the far side of her in the blue canoe there. And she's the European champion and the world bronze medalist. And at the moment, it's Canada from... Uh, Kazakova of Russia, that's the one-two as they come through to the half distance here. And this 19-year-old is spread eagling this, uh, this field here. Russia in second place, vying for the bronze medal. Staminova also of Bulgaria and also trying to get their Belarus. Gold to Canada, silver to Russia, bronze to Bulgaria. That's surely the one-two-three. Well, pillar to post, and that was one at the start. Yes, that's right. I mean, we said the start is so important here, and you can see, nice and relaxed, way to a good first stroke, keeping everything under control. Just so difficult to do over this short distance. But she looked great, didn't she? She's demonstrating to the other paddlers how it's done. Using those long levers, those long legs, she's driving with, you can see there. Long arms, staying nice and upright, head position perfectly still. She looks great, doesn't she? She was, but what really impressed me was she was patient and so well balanced. Now, let's just check on the bronze medal here. Definitely Canada for gold, definitely Russia. 
Bulgaria. Yeah, clear third ahead of Belarus, uh, who took fourth place. Might just be in a photo with uh, maybe Lydia Weber for uh, fourth place. Yeah, and what's so encouraging to see for this event, actually, is all nine boats coming across within perhaps two or three seconds of each other. So yep. extremely competitive. Good uh, medal there for the Bulgarian and a fantastic improvement given that she was disqualified in the European. So that's a big piece of confidence boost for her. But, you know, who's going to lower the colour of this woman? This is two gold medals for Canada, two gold medals for herself in the Canadian doubles yesterday, and now she's defended her title. Yeah, she was magnificent there, wasn't she? She'll be desperately hoping, along with the Canadian Federation, that this gets put into the Olympic Games. Belarus, yeah, Belarus getting fourth place. Lydia Weber uh, for fifth. Still to come, the men's kayak doubles and the women's kayak doubles. So here are the nine uh, partnerships that have come through. For British fans, their fingers will be crossed that Liam Heath and uh, Johnny Schofield in lane six, the European champions, can take the world title. There's been a bit of a trend in the last half an hour. Let's hope that perhaps uh, they might be able to Two do that. But they've got to really the tough opposition Two here, the notably the French, the who start, are the world area. champions in, lane, in uh, lane four, to right area. next to them. In your lane, please. Well, the Belarus... Uh, Petroshenko and Maknev, they won their semi-final. The French won the second uh, semi-final. 31.9 for the French, 31.8 for the Belarus. As we see lane one here, this is Romania. Jonat Mitreya, Bogdan Mada out in uh, lane number one. But not out of this, particularly because all Romanian crews seem to start extremely fast. The Latvians, uh, Chris Straum and Alexei Romankevich, they are the bronze medalists from Europe. Then the Danes. Now, the Danes were only ninth in the world, but Lassie Nielsen and Kasper Nielsen really look a class act. They certainly did in the semis. Lane four, Arno Ibois and Sebastian Juve, the world champions. And lane five now, Belarus here. Raman Piatrashenka, Vadzim Maknev were European silver medalists, but they didn't make the final a year ago, so this is better. And here, sitting up front there, Liam Heath, sitting in the stern, that's uh, Jonathan Schofield from Way Kayak Club and Sur Valley, European champions. And their coach, uh, Alex uh, Nikor. Nikonarov, that's right, Alex Nikonarov, yeah, he'll be having his fingers crossed here, but he knows these guys have had excellent preparation leading up to this event. And Ronald Rao, behind him, Jonas Ames, Ronald Rao, silver in the, uh, sorry, uh, bronze in the K1, doubling up in the K2. Good start by the British. They were away with uh, pretty well everyone. Fourth from the bottom of the picture there. Blades flying here. And the British have got the edge here. And Liam Heath and Johnny Schofield just ahead. Just beyond them there are the uh, Belarus and France. Very much on the premises. It's the two white kayaks. France on the wide side. And on the near side, Great Britain, France and... Great Britain absolutely bow to bow as they come towards the line. Can Liam Heath pull out a little bit more? They come to the line. Great Britain at the bottom, France at the top. France are the world champions, I think, once again. Great Britain in the mix for silver and bronze. Oh, what a race. That was 100% the whole way down and so, so close. When you looked across there, you could see four or five bows going across in a line. It just looked like the French had the edge over the last 20 or 30 strokes, but I think Britain may have grabbed that silver medal. You can see the start, look at that, absolute blanket start, maybe lane two, Latvia out of it a little bit there, but apart from that, extremely close. This is fast, furious racing, there's no room for error here. British get away well, a very powerful, light, powerful crew there, but other crews going with them, the French in the white boot, boat look extremely controlled over the last 20 or 30 strokes. Right, so the French come to take gold, silver, 
Yep, I think that's Great Britain. Germans were doing very well on the bottom of the picture there. Um, and this photograph doesn't actually help us that much. Well, it does a bit, yeah. Germany are in there, but also uh, maybe Latvia at the top there, two from the top, and Romania in with a shout of the bronze medal. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see the French crew here. The British guys, Liam and Johnny, knew they would be the big contenders. They weren't there in the European Championships when Liam and Johnny won it, and they knew the French were such a talented crew, and they proved it here, didn't they? But the British put them under enormous pressure. And there it is, uh, Belarus, actually, uh, between. Now, that was uh, pretty hard to see. They have got the bronze medal, and Romania, who were furthest away in lane one, they uh, just miss out there with Germany uh, at the bottom of your picture, who were closest to you, uh, just behind as well. So it seems that Great Britain's fortunes are destined for silver medals. That's our third silver medal of the day. But uh, take uh, nothing away from the French. That was absolutely superb. Uh, that's the number one French boat, and they will go to the Olympic Games next year as the reigning world champions. Yeah, and maybe as favourites, which could play into, into the British hands. So from men's kayaks, we uh, go swiftly on to the women's kayak pairs. Now, just to uh, make sure uh, that everybody's clear on this, whereas the men's kayak pairs are in the Olympics, the women's kayak pairs are not. Over on the far Lane side one. there, Jana Smitakova and Beatrice Manchon of Spain. Australia. They were sixth Lane in the World three. Championships in Poland Russia. last year. And then two Over. very talented Lane Aussies, five. Joanne Bridgen jones Lane great six. sprinter, Lane. and Hannah Davis Lane for Australia. Seven. They Germany. could very well Lane be in the mix here for medals. Lane Next Lane to them for Russia, Lane Svetlana Kudinova and Lane Natalia Proskina, fifth in, in the Europeans this year. And then to their right in lane number four, we find the Polish duo of Karolina Naj and Magdalena Krukowska. Um, this is a different partnership to the one that finished sixth in the World Championships and second in the Worlds. So it's sixth in the Europeans and second in the Worlds last uh, year. And Katlin Kovac and Danuta Kozak get the roar. Now, they are the European champions, and Katalin Kovac last year with Natasha Janic were the world champions. In lane six, uh, the European bronze medalist in picture, Volna Kutsenka and Mariana Paltaran, who was in the medals earlier today over 5,000 metres. What a switch for her. And then Caroline Lennart and Connie Vasmuth. The Germans were fourth last year when Fanny Fischer was in the boat. Eighth. Lane is occupied by uh, Olga Pavlik and Vlada Kosta, Koska from the Ukraine. And closest to you, representing the Czech Republic in blue, Jana Sebastova and Jana Blahova. Well, Hungary haven't had a gold medal today. Is this the moment? Yeah, the crowd will be absolutely chomping at the bit. This Hungarian team will be hungry for the gold. Kozak. Silver medalist in the K1 500 metres already here. And the Hungarians won the K4 as well, so... Yeah, again, it's an extremely close start. Remember, we're talking about 10th separating boats here. It's going to be absolutely eyeballs out. They just lost the control a little bit, Hungarians, but they're pushing to get their bow in front, and they'll feel the crowd lift them, as you can see. It looks like the Spanish or the Australians, in fact, over the far side. Yeah, the Australians, but the power of uh, Kozak really forcing at the moment. Australians are right there. Also, the Polish are right alongside the Hungarians at the moment, coming down towards the finish. Hungary in the lead at the moment. Also coming very quickly, Germany, but it's Hungary are going to get there. Poland and Australia, maybe. Poland and Australia for silver and bronze, but Hungary have got their gold medal of the day. The legendary Kathleen Kovac and Danuta Kozak. Now they've pulled it off. Wow, and you can see how pleased, how relieved, in fact, they are. Look, there's 20,000 people expecting them to win here, but they delivered. Decent start from them. But the, it was the middle section of the course. The Hungarians just used their strength to pull through on the others. But they were put under pressure by the Australians on the far side, who looked in really, really good shape and were strong at the finish. And the Polish, I think, surprised us all over the last 20 or 30 strokes. Absolutely. But uh, 
The Hungarians trying to finish the regatta on a high note. Poland second. Oh, yeah, I think Australia ahead of Germany. Germany probably in fourth place. Yeah, that's a bronze medal unofficially, of course, to the Australians. Delight from them. Look at that aggression on the face as they fight their way down here. They really had to work extremely hard for that, and that's when the hours and hours of paddling up and down the river over the winter will count, because it's ingrained in them. It's great, but, you know, rewind five years when Kathleen Kovac and Natasha Janic set that unbelievable performance of six gold medals in 24 hours. The noise was even bigger. Gold to Hungary, silver to Poland, bronze to Australia. Line up here with the world and European champions repre representing Lithuania in lane five. They are the crew to beat. But also... Uh, I think keep an eye on the Russians who missed out in the Europeans. We start our identification on the far side as ever. Andre Oliveira and uh, Yere Picalo for uh, Spain. Different partnership to the two one that represented start, Spain in the European Championships. And then, uh, well, C2K. Brazil now. This is De Oliveira and De Souza Silva. De Souza Silva on the left of your picture. They were 10th in the world last year, just failed to get into the final, so this is already an improvement. Then Romania, Alexander Dumitrescu, Lazar and Victor Mihalacci. Mihalacci. Very successful, but just in the last couple of seasons, missing the medals. Victor Malantiev and Nikolai Lipkin, they were fourth in Europe this year. Watch out for them. And then the world champions for Lithuania, Raimundas Labukas and Thomas Gadaikis. And uh, very distinctive green canoe, green racing outfit. For Germany, Stefan Kiraj and Björn Veske. They were fifth in the world a year ago. Then in uh, lane number seven, the Belarusians. Dmitry Rabshanka, Alexander Varchesky, silver medalist at Europe start. level and sixth in the world. Hungary in the green canoe there. Gabor Kurovat, who's got a new partner for the world championships, Laszlo Foltan. Gabor was third in the Europeans and closest to you, representing Latvia, Gatis Pranks and Antons Knesis. Well, again, this could be extremely close right across the field. They've got talent here. You'd be a brave man to bet against the Lithuanians. Well, world European champions. Holding them a very long time here. This is uncomfortable. Yeah, and you can see the Lithuanians have got there, the Germans and the Belarusians are way to a quick start. And the Lithuanians, the Lithuanians, they're making their strength count. Look at them paddling. Look at that stroke rate. Unbelievable stroke rate there. Far side of them are the Russians. Then just behind them are Germany, but also challenging Belarus. But half a canoe's length for all the world and European champions as they charge down towards the line. It looks like the Lithuanians can just hold off, but they're coming very quickly now. Lithuania, they're going to sit back and shoot the bow of the canoe. They retain the title. And Russia, Belarus, and also Germany in the photograph there for silver and bronze. Job done. Well, absolutely. Another dominant performance we've seen here. Lithuanians, not quite start to finish, but they led most of the race. Extremely strong. And something that is not easy in this class, a really high stroke rate they were able to maintain and still put the power into the boat. Yeah, look at the coverage on the blades as well. At that rate, it's not easy. No, that's right. Yeah, ideally, you're trying to have the long stroke that you would have. It's sort of 70% effort, but whipped up in an incredibly high rate, and that is really, really difficult to do. So, looking for the medals here. Lithuania gold. Russia the silver. And then Germany and Belarus, certainly in a photograph for the... 
bronze medal. Brazil were not far away either at the top of the picture. Mm. The Brazilians, you know, are very close in that photo. Oh, is it the Brazilians? I'm just trying to work out. Or is it the Romanians? May well be the Romanians. Romanians, but... Romanians actually. It's the Blues that confuse me there. I think it's the Romanians who might be in with the shout of the bronze. Yeah, and the Germans and Russians so close over the line. Well, strength, force, but fantastic balance, fantastic rhythm, fantastic time. These men know each other, and Belarus have got the bronze medal, and that's Rabshanka and Valcheski. Silver to Russia. The